Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to After Hours Gaming League. This is your host, JW Schmo from Team Raytheon. As you know, uh, if you've been watching all my casts, which I know you all do, uh, we have uh, we have a couple extra casters this uh, <clears throat> this week. Do some casting for Raytheon, so I'm covered. Our team is covered. You can check out the replays of Raytheon vs. Twitch TV on uh, Nightshade's uh, YouTube page. So, I had some free time this week, and uh, I had decided that uh, I'd cast uh, Epic vs. Palantir. And uh, here we go. So, game number four between Epic and Palantir in the bottom left-hand corner. Playing for Epic is the blue Protoss is Chevron. Also happens to drill for oil on occasion. And in the upper right hand corner, playing as the Red Protoss for Palantir, is the Dark Lord himself, Fox. Occasionally, he will fly starships with a frog and um, a rabbit, and uh, there's one other one that I'm forgetting. Was it a toad? Mm. So this matchup has uh, gone back and forth here. Game number one went to Epic. JT is alive, a very effective Terran player. He went up against a uh, Zerg opponent, Palantir, who went Muta Ling Baneling. Unfortunately for him, JC is alive. From Epic's team decided to go for Thors. And uh, he also went for Hellbats, which uh, most people would recognize as uh, very effective against Ling Muta, unfortunately. And uh, game number two. Game number two is interesting. BBK from uh, Palantir came up with the win, but uh, not before going for the Proxy Dark Shrine. The most effective Proxy Dark Shrine I think I have ever seen. He was able to very effectively dissuade his mm, Terran opponent, Resolute, in the mid-game, about the six-minute mark. Resolute decided he was going to march across that battlefield and lay waste to his opponent, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of the, middle of the map, gone. These invisible things were just decimating his army. And uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. A very interesting one-base play by BBK. I liked it. Uh, a little bit unconventional there. Uh, game number three. Oh, I just cast that. What happened in game number three? I no, quite frankly, don't even remember. <sighs> what did just happen? Oh, that's right. It was a Protoss versus Zerg. Zerg went and absolutely did his best. Mm, let's see, that would be there, and that would be there. Yeah, so, hmm, Mind Blight played an interesting prototype match going for Colossus play. However, um, he was not calm enough in order to win the day. And uh, Epic's Calm was able to come in with some very good uh, transitory Zergling Roach Hydra play. He had Ultras hiding out in the backfield in the sense that he had the uh, Ultras Tavern, and he was ready and willing to lay down the transition almost immediately. Uh, but didn't need to. Was able to win it on the first major engagement. Took down two Colossus with just Roach Hydra Zergling play. Unfortunately for Mind Blight, uh, and so Mind Blight had his mind blown in that matchup. All right, so we've got a proxy pylon from Chevron near the Zelnaga Tower. So this Zelnaga Tower is contained; it will not be able to attack anyone. Chevron will know what is going on. Chevron is going to lay some zealots down, and these guys are going to give chase. And they're running. Look at them run. They runneth. They runneth fast. Mm. And they stand. Now, 
three stalkers could very easily come over here and absolutely decimate this with this tower and kill off all four of these guys. All right, Chevron, very nice going for the all in here it looks like but the dark lord himself is gonna have some sentries back and he's gonna put that 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 fool's field down and all of a sudden chevron is in a little bit of an awkward position he doesn't have his mothership for yet he doesn't have uh really much of anything at this point other than his uh main army which consists of uh three stalkers and uh excuse me four stalkers four zealots uh, the dark lord himself with a couple of decent forces here, it will easily destroy this uh, attack. This mothership for is going to get destroyed up. Ooh! It lives on hopes and prayers alone. My goodness, you could not get that any closer. I mean, maybe if you were to send a. Uh, yeah, you couldn't. That mothership core is destined to die. And yet, somehow, it lives to see another day. Alright, so Chevron deciding that behind that he is going to get his uh, expansion out. Now, everyone knows that the first Protoss to expand is typically the first one to lose in a match. Uh, the Dark Lord himself is going to lay down the robotics facility first. Oh, uh, let's look at this. Uh, excuse me, he wasn't first. Chevron was first. He's going to get the Molotovs. Um, not exactly a heavy stalker composition for the Dark Lord himself. So I'm not sure how effective that's going to be. All right, so we've got mm, charge lots. We've got a dark shrine going down here, and we've got a robotics facility for the dark lord. He's doing a little bit of scouting. Um, Chevron. He's got the robotics facility. It looks like he's going to get his forge down. So there's really a couple paths here that can be taken. The Dark Lord is going for the Dark Shrine. So that's going to be Dark Templar. That's really going to be his next transition. And then most likely, uh, if that doesn't work, it's going to be some form of uh, Archon play. Archon um, could go with some immortals here with this robotics facility. Really, this is here, I would assume, mostly for protection. You should be careful. Uh, I should note that Chevron though is well prepared for any type of dark uh, Templar play. This observer is going to be worth its weight in gold. And here we go to Dark Templar on the field and Chevron is now supply blocked. The Dark Lord himself is up. Uh, 21, 21 supply just, uh, available for building. Oh no! And the two armies pass the night, one observer from the other. Dark Templar are going to get nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. That's right, you went nowhere. And I don't think, no, Chevron doesn't see it. Oh, excuse me, of course Chevron sees it. It's his base, the Dark Lord himself. Dark Lord himself does not see it. Alright, so he's making a transition to Archon. Very intelligent play at this point. Uh, making that move really needs to get that natural a little bit better populated. Shre Chevron doing a good job there with populating his bases. Mm -hmm. The Dark Lord himself laying down a forge, laying down two forges. He knows he's behind on the research. Gonna try and get ahead on that one. Uh, Chevron is going to be oiling for plus one attack. And unfortunately for him, he is fly blocking. Again, Doc Lord himself has been very effective on remaining not supply block. Which is very important. And for some reason I can't go down. Hmm, not good. I actually have no control over anything. What's going on here? Hmm, there we go. Okay, he's got control of the map again. This militia core somehow has survived. Alright, so Chevron. Nice set of units here. Zealots. And Mortal. Mortal not going to be terribly effective here. Uh, I get to see some Archons. Uh, Rui would have been nice to have more stalkers in the mix from the Dark Lord himself. That was not the case. And he is going to go for the plus one army armor and. Uh, 
And it does look like Chevron is going to be going for his <coughs> Colossus. So the Dark Lord going for his third. Now you know what they say, the first, first Protoss was in the game, typically loses. So now the Dark Lord himself is getting his third. And Chevron is just hanging out, getting a couple more zealots. It really would be a good time to push right now. The transition, finishing up his armor. Actually, that would be pretty bad. He's got an immortal getting pushed out here by the Dark Lord himself. And the Dark Templar, that's going to be an Archon right there. Yes, sad. And they're about even in their supply count. I mean, the big difference in composition here is th these Archon versus these Colossus. Uh, Chevron is going to have the range at this point against these Archons. These Archons are going to have to be up close and personal. The one problem, though, here with this composition for Chevron is he's got a huge amount of zealots. So these zealots are going to have to go right up and knock on the door of these Archons. And these Archons are going to have nothing to it. They're going to be like... Pfft. They gotta, you know, Kamea Kamea back the um, the zealots into oblivion, especially with four of them. So the saving grace here for Chevron are those two colossus. Now he's not very aware of these archons. He must assume at this point he's gonna go for the attack, immediately going to try and take out the lots of stalkers, lots of zealots. My computer does not like all the glowiness. And here we go. This is what it all comes down to. These Colossus are doing work. But is it enough to go down? Is it going to be enough? Because it's kind of a small, sensible, like, dark, the dark world itself has to be very bad. Oh my goodness, these Colossus are doing really work. is going to be in a little bit of a precarious position. He's got three Colossus against him right now. That's a lot of Colossus to have no army against. The Dark Lord himself is going to be laying down Zealots. Not exactly the best unit to be using in this case. But Chevron really could take it home to him right here. The Dark Lord getting another mm, mothership call. Archons, more Archons. Here we go, this is it. The Dark Lord himself deciding to abandon his third. No! Oh, the blue is going to die! Blazing coin! The incinerator! He's going to stay in the Chevron Blue. He's trying to run away. Ah, oh, these Colossus. She's got a huge advantage. Chevron not expecting to leave that unit that quickly. And this unit composition by the Dark Lord himself, very effective. He's going to hold on to his third by the skin of his teeth. And Chevron has not. Now, I don't, I don't know what this is. This is a dance. We're all dancing. Mm, we're dancing. I don't know why we're dancing. Hmm, dancing. Well, there's not much else going on except for the fact that these probes are wigging out. Wiggy. Wiggity wiggity. This is fascinating. Not even sure how that happens. While these pros are wigged out, Chevron is getting his third, and the Dark Lord himself is on the move. Are these probes going to unwig before the Dark Lord makes it to the third? It does not look like it. These probes will wig out in the oblivion. And the Dark Lord himself is going to be pushing a little bit of a post for two colossus against the in the Dark Lord itself.
No, sir, he's not done yet. These immortals now are going to be very effective here against, well, maybe the Colossus, really. And now that, ooh, Chevron. Very nice. I like it, I like it, I like it. Mm. One stock is going to go down. Another, ooh, Zealot's going to die. I love to kill it back. Now, please, what the? I don't understand this. Like, seriously, what is this bug doing? It's a bug. Fix it. Alright. The Dark Lord himself finally laying down on his robotics facility. He is oversaturated on his natural. He's almost oversaturated on his third, except he doesn't have the assimilator doing his thing. He's oversaturated on his main. Fairly impressive to be able to do that this late in the game. Finally sees the observer and takes it out. Now he is way ahead on the attack upgrades at this point. 1-1 one, one for his blue opponent, Chevron. Chevron uh, falling behind here on his upgrades. This is going to be a major disadvantage for him. Uh, he's packing a lot of heat here gas-wise. Uh, really needs to keep that going, and it's not going to happen. I, this is going to give the Dark Lord himself uh, a huge advantage with uh, that, coupled with the fact that now he's going to be able to get Colossus. Lotus is not well enough for blue. And that's going to put us in game number five here if, uh, if the Dark Lord himself is able to uh, hold off this little poke. The Pocus. I mean, these Colossus are effective, but I mean, you're going up against plus three armor and attack? No, I, I don't think so. It's awkward. And that's going to be awkward. These Colossus are doing damage. They're going to do work, but are they going to do enough work? Let's find out. Oh my gosh. Just the Zealots are just getting absolutely obliterated, and now it's all Archons. Chevron has to come back. He's got to run, but there's nowhere to go. Because it's all right here. Another, oh, a cross. It's two crosses. Left his third gonna fall. Looks like a third gonna fall. Maybe. The Dark Lord himself is just pounding. And now Chevron is gonna have to fight for these crosses. And play the game. Oh, look at this. Crosses are doing it. Look at this one. Playing off the Dark Lord himself. He's upgraded. He's gotta upgrade. There it is. There it is. Plus two upgrade finished. Plus three is almost done. Halfway. He understands the risks. But it might be too late. Oh, another robotics facility going down to the Dark Lord himself. Now he can pump out twice the number of immortals and have twice the number of them die in the middle of the death. This might be a little bit too uh, risky of a push here. Chevron is in a very precarious position here to be taken out his only units to defend. This could be a very poor decision for Chevron. His Colossus are completely undefended. They're going to have to engage at this point. These Zealots are only going to slow down my computer. One of the Colossus falls is going to go right over the main. Mm, now what? I'm in your main base. What are you going to do now? I think if I were you, I don't... Well, I would lay down a photon overcharge. Mm. Some scouting going on here by Chevron. One Colossus goes out. These two Colossus, they're scouting. That's what they're doing. They're scouting. Two Colossus have now scouted the entire internal workings of the dock load in the south base. Mm. Interesting. And now Chevron, a little bit mystified on what to do next. Two more Colossus, a third one, fourth one going down. That might be enough to turn the tide, but the problem is the Dark Lord himself still researching and building. And in a little bit better of a position, I would argue with this is six, six Archons. And now they're getting plus one shields. They're going to have plus two shields here shortly. And then what? And what's going on? And Chevron's down a base. Oh, that's not good. Uh, but let's look at the probe count. Mm, what's the probe count? It's about even. So, uh, in theory, uh, it's about even. It's about even, even. Mm -hmm. Yes. These 
Argons just kind of float away. Actually, uh, looking at the loss of the cow, it, they're almost identical. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Chevron is going to see this little uh, meandering. He has four Colossus to uh, the Dark Lords, two. He must see it. He must know it's coming. He really needs to put down some form of accelerant here. Uh, Chrono Boost would be nice. These Zealots, though, are plus three on the attack. That is going to give him a little bit of advantage, but uh, the Dark Lord just too much right now. Wow, he is going to get Extended Lance. That's a nice little thing to have. Uh, it does look like the Dark Lord is going to be the only Protoss player on this map with the Extended Lance. I don't think his opponent has it at this point. It's hard to tell right now. It really is. Oh my gosh, these girls are out of position. Are they going to make it? I don't know. It's scary. Alright, so we have... People turn at the base. What is this? Six Colossus to three. So Shepard has the Colossus count. But this is going to be a shot. Zell is going to hold out for a little bit. But my goodness, they are just getting absolutely decimated here by them. Right? On some mark up the Wow, it's cool. I mean, it's like they just kind of went to the walk and said, Peace! And with that, Chevron gets the GG. And we are going into game number five. This is the ace match that we're going to be going into. Epic and Palantir have battled forth. And they are going to be deciding who wins this week in the ace match. This is JW Schmo from Team Atheon. Thank you for watching. And stay classy.